In a world driven by innovation, one force is poised to revolutionize everything we know. Quantum, the frontier of science, is rewriting the rules. Imagine computers that solve currently intractable problems in seconds instead of centuries. Quantum AI, quantum-powered space navigation, a quantum leap in data security. Possibilities we can't even fathom. The world will become smaller and our knowledge greater. Scientists, innovators, visionaries, companies, and nations are racing to harness this power. Quantum isn't just a moment, it's a movement. It's a community pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Quantum energy solutions will redefine sustainability. Quantum-powered precision forecasts will change preparedness. Quantum will optimize supply chains. Quantum diagnostics and imaging will save lives. The world as we know it is on the brink of a quantum transformation. The quantum future is here. The only question is, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quantum World Congress 2023. We're so glad you're here. So we're once again reassembling from around the world, many uh, foreign travelers here, international travelers with us to responsibly build and accelerate this quantum ecosystem. And you know why we're here, we're not here because of a potential US government shutdown. We're, we're not here because this group of leaders has nothing else to do. But we're here because this group of people is curious enough and cares enough to help shape our collective future in this age of innovation. So we're going to be exploring, learning, building relationships over the next couple of days here that help responsibly move us all forward. Since we met nine months ago, last met, the countries, the companies, the institutions represented here today have made some exceptional progress. And we'll hear a number of very exciting announcements here these next two days from this stage. Um, and at the highest level, one of the, what we're working on is really aligning a cross-sector group of people uh, that don't work with each other every day, but by working together, we know we can create a more robust ecosystem for quantum. Uh, and we can do that across disciplines, we can do that across geographies. People like Max Planck, Niels Bohr, Albert Einstein, other pioneers, they got this party started in quantum mechanics and physics over 100 years ago. And scientists have been working hard for over a century now uh, to understand how our universe works at the subatomic level. And uh, discoveries are continuing to accelerate and excitingly, they're finding their way to market now. And scientists, uh, really, again, they've had a 100 year head start and the rest of us need to catch up, right? This includes our technologists, our policymakers, educators, our economic developers, entrepreneurs, the financial community. And once we're really able to align more fully aligned technology, policy, and the workforce with quantum science, then we can have the makings of a robust quantum marketplace. It's in our national security interest for all of us, it's in our commercial interest, it's in our overall societal interest, and by working together, we can avoid some of the challenges that possibly plagued us with cryptocurrency and AI and the like. So this alignment that you see here of policy, workforce, science, and technology is really what we're all about here, bringing that together in a cross-border uh, collective way. Okay, so as, as we get started, um, I think we can ready, readily acknowledge that some of us may be a little bit intimidated by the physicist and the scientist uh, in a room. And to put you a little more at ease, if you were to look to the person to your left or right, they might be one of the smartest people in the, in the world, one of the brightest minds in the world. And, um, but they also, the scientists and physicists, they need some of the smartest people in the room on policy, on technology, on education, on funding and the like. And together, I, again, across sector, across discipline, across geography, this is possible. We can acknowledge that we've got catching up to do. One of our sponsors is Dr. William Hurley, affectionately known as Whirly. He just released the book Quantum for Dummies. And I'm offering two copies to the first couple of people that will raise their hands and will help you get those signed uh, by Whirly. He'll be in the house. I see a hand here. That's the, the lights are bright, but let me get you two books.
right, I see that hand right there. Thank you. If, you've, if you have not uh, downloaded the conference app, you can find the link at quantumworldcongress.com. So you can just go there and download the, the app. It includes all the session times, the short descriptions. It's got speaker bios. You can see the, all the participants who've chosen to make themselves visible. You can see them on that app as well. And now as we look at our agenda, we're, we're particularly excited. Um, yesterday, we had a robust pre-conference day of workshops and boot camps. And about 450 of you came and attended these sessions. We had a, a super session on data centers of the future. We had a great uh, session on the international forum where different countries were sharing their perspectives on the things that uh, they're working on, on on their own national basis. We held a startup pitch competition. The winner of that will be announced later uh, in today's session. And uh, we held a variety of boot camps on quantum standards and algorithms and education and sensors. And so yesterday was a boot camp and workshop day. And uh, yesterday evening, we had a special session uh, that was hosted by Dutch Ambassador Brigitte Tazlar, uh, where we discussed international collaboration amongst friends and the need to do that on a more uh, assertive and aggressive basis. So even before this main conference got under the way, we, we have what we call in America a great running start. Today and tomorrow, we'll have plenary sessions in the morning. So we'll gather here together in the mornings and we'll hear from a number of different people. We'll have breakouts and lunch in the middle of the day. We'll come back for plenary at the end of the day. We'll do that both days, today and tomorrow. If your breakout location that you're going to attend later says Maplewood Room, uh, that is the one breakout room that is not in this building. It's in the building immediately across the street. You'll need a special hologram to get into that building. It's not a quantum sensor, it's simply a hologram. Uh, you can just, that will get put on your badge and you'll be able to get into the door. Our volunteers will be outside and they'll direct you uh, as you need to the, different, uh, to the different locations. The exhibit show floor right outside the back will be open each day and uh, a great place for networking, a great place to find some refreshments. Meals will be provided up on the third floor terrace around the corner up the stairs in the area called q -bites. I didn't name it, it works. Um, there will be a, bar a barista stand and you'll be able to see a number of the other sponsors and uh, the exciting things that they're doing. I would encourage all of you to attend the education uh, floor, what we call the launch pad, it's on the second floor. Uh, around the corner again. And this is where you can see what some of the students and educational institutions have been doing to help develop and launch uh, our, accelerate our work uh, force. So please stop by, please encourage the students. I'm not sure if we have them in the balcony with us today, but there are a number of students with us that have worked uh, and are working on quantum programs. Please encourage them, they're, they're the future that we need to, to drive this forward. Uh, at last year's conference, I, I would call out Dr. Harry Shaw from NASA because he took the interest in a group of students, followed up after the conference, and then hosted a group of inner city uh, kids in greater Washington, D.C. and took them out to NASA and showed them what some uh, potential work could look like for their futures, eye-opening, exposing people that had never been exposed to quantum and generating interest. There are a number of programs like that and interests like that, but I just call out Dr. Harry Shaw for the interest he, he took last year in some of these uh, exceptional students. There'll be a reception at the end of the day today hosted by Q Control. It'll be out in the exhibit hall. I would encourage all of you to attend that. And uh, really want to say a thanks from our team at Connected DMV. Connected DMV is a charitable nonprofit organization. We work on complex programs that cross sectors, that cross geographies, that drive responsible economic growth. So we're very pleased to be with you today and to be your host uh, for this event. Uh, there are a couple of outstanding network organizations that we work with. Uh, one of them is QEDC. You'll see their booth outside. Many of you are members. Dr. Celia Mertzbacher, thank you for your ongoing support and participation. Paul Steimers also leads the Quantum Industry Coalition. These are great network organizations that, again, are responsibly helping to drive the ecosystem forward. Um, we have a great set of sponsors this year, and the sponsors cover a lot of different categories and capabilities. Right now, I'm just going to call out four of them, and these are our platinum sponsors. And thank you for the work today. Thank you for uh, all the other sponsors as well. And please, I would encourage uh, the attendees to visit these sponsor booths and talk to them. These are people that are doing leading work. 
The first I'll mention is EY, and they're a world-class accounting and professional services firm. Uh, they provide audit, tax, consulting, advisory services to their clients across 150 countries for the past 25 years. Fortune Magazine has ranked EY as one of the top 100 companies to work for. Uh, we'll hear in a bit from Kristen Gilkes, and uh, thank you, Kristen, um, for your leadership, your sponsorship, and we look forward to your remarks uh, shortly this morning. IonQ is our second platinum sponsor, and uh, they are also the first quantum unicorn. They transferred com and commercialized technology uh, from the University of Maryland. They built quantum computers with that. They had initial seed funding of a couple million dollars. I believe they're over two and a half billion dollars in market cap today. So we're excited to have publicly uh, traded quantum companies now in the ecosystem. And coming out of academia, it even shows how the intersection works between the, the private sector, commercial opportunities, the research institutions, and academia. And a lot of that collaboration is what we want to encourage. So Peter Chapman, Dr. Young Sang Kim, Chris Monroe, thank you for your sponsorship. We look forward to your exciting uh, presentation and announcement uh, later today. PsyQuantum is our next platinum sponsor. They're building large-scale fault-tolerant quantum computers. They're a great leader in quantum, and they've got some exciting news to share that you won't want to miss. Uh, Jeremy O'Brien and the team at PsyQuantum, thank you for your generous support for the Quantum World Congress, and we look forward to hearing your remarks shortly. Our fourth uh, platinum sponsor is Fairfax County. We're in Fairfax County. This hall sits in Fairfax County. Um, Fairfax County, uh, as part of the greater Washington region, and they uh, ha have a relentless pursuit for responsible economic growth. We're so pleased to partner with them. Victor Hoskins and the Fairfax County Chair, Jeff McKay, we thank you and your teams for your exceptional leadership, and uh, we look forward to learning more about you outside today. Geography matters. So we can talk about quantum science, we can talk about the technology, the policy, the workforce, all those things are important. Geography matters also. That's where ecosystems come together. And so we're very pleased to have Fairfax County as a plat platinum sponsor uh, this year for Quantum World Congress. Um, so again, I encourage you to get to know the sponsors uh, in, the, in the times afterwards and in the break times as you're in the, uh, in the hall, the exhibit hall also.